Hi there, this is Rick Clark, eager to get caught up with you. I used to be a hippie philosophy student. I was really into philosophy. I was smoking grass at the same time, selling grass. My life was very different than it is now. And I was searching. I wanted to understand life. I knew I didn't understand life. And so I was on a passionate search to try and figure out what is life all about. And I had encountered, even at that uh, young age, I was in my early 20s, enough of the negatives, the bad news of life, I was looking for some good news. And frankly, I had written off anything that might come from the Bible, anything that might have been uh, uh, suggestive of uh, Christianity, especially organized religion, because I had found it to be, frankly, pretty empty. And so as I was on my search, I ran into some carpenters who uh, were different than other guys I had worked with. They didn't swear. They, they uh, really had a wonderful demeanor about themselves. And I had lunch with these guys one day. And one guy picked out a pocket New Testament and started to read it. Well... When I was a philosophy student, I'd asked a number of PhD philosophy professors, Professor, can you explain life to me? And one guy said, well, Rick, we know the problems, but we don't know the answers. So I casually asked this carpentry buddy, I had just met him two days before. And I said, hey, Bob, can you explain life to me? And he said, yeah, I think I can. And he went on to share with me good news. Now, the gospel is so simple, a four-year-old can understand it. It's this. Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for all of our sin. Sin has ruined our relationship with God. But if we trust the Lord Jesus as our Savior, he will forgive us of all of our sin and give us eternal life as the Spirit of God comes to live within us. Pretty simple. Trust in Jesus. Now, up until that point, I had believed, or hopefully believed, as many people do, well, maybe this is what will work. I'm a nice guy, and God's a nice God, if he's really there. And so, my goodness will outweigh my badness, and I think I'm going to be all right when I stand before him. Well, that isn't the way I discovered the good news, uh, that wasn't what was being said in this Bible. And so, as I began to read, uh, I found that the good news was better than I thought. I'd suggest that might be true for you. The, the, the news about a relationship with God, the Creator God, that you can have, is so good that it's probably better than you think. So if you have some misconception that organized religion's a drag and that Christianity is a bunch of rules and a guilt trip and dead and no fun, you can't really be very alive if you're like one of those Christians, I'd encourage you to can that thought. No, I'll tell you, Christianity is really good news. Jesus, God in the flesh, came down to handle our three biggest problems, sin, death, and the devil. There, there are fallen angels that are your enemies. And Jesus, in 1 Corinthians 15, says he died for your sin. He rose to defeat death. And then he takes over as a kingdom, and he rules over this earth. He's going to rule uh, in such a way that even now... When I came under his kingdom rule, my life has been so incredibly good. I can hardly believe how happy, how blessed, how full my life is because I had misunderstood the good news. And then I came to understand it quite fully. I'm not saying I've got it all together or that I've fully plumbed the depths of the good news. But I'll tell you what, the gospel was better than I thought. And you may find it the same way. 
So as we go through a number of clips, I'm going to keep explaining the gospel from various angles, from various um, insights, uh, various uh, passages from the Bible. Stick with me. Don't abandon this. Don't think, ah, oh, the gospel isn't that good. The gospel is better than you think.